assert the uniqueness of God and forbid such things such as theft, adultery, murder, lying, and so on and so forth. The Ten Commandments are equally important Jewish and Christian traditions and appear in the Old Testament in Exodus and Deuteronomy. Various Christian and Jewish traditions have different wordings for the Ten Commandments. They can be numbered differently. They appear in various forms in the Bible. Now let's look at the Ten Commandments and what it says. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy, for it is the day of the Lord your God. Honor your father and your mother. You should not kill. You should not commit adultery. And you should not steal. You should not give false testimony against your neighbor. And you should not covet your neighbor's wife. You should not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Hallelujah. So, this was copied from New English version of the Bible. And that's why we don't see thou, 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 you know, in the tests I've just read now. Praise God. So the Ten Commandments are equally as important today as it was when God walked with his people several thousand years ago. Hallelujah. And so we're going to take our hymn today um, the old-fashioned way. <laughs> Praise God. When I say the old-fashioned way, I mean without keyboard, no instruments. Praise God. Uh, we got born again and grew up in churches and local assemblies where there was no instrument. We use hands to praise God. We clap our hands to praise God. We clap hands. We use our hands to make rhythm. Praise God. And you got at the back there brothers with baritone and uh, sisters that sings uh, in soprano. That sing soprano and treble. We have alto and tenor. And when we Merge all those together, it makes a very wonderful rhythm. Praise God. Rock of Ages cleft for me. Let's go. Rock of Ages cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy riven side which flowed be of sin the double cure. Save me from its guilt and power. Stanza 2. Not the labor of my hands can fulfill thy lost demands. Could my zeal no respite know? Could my tears forever flow? All could never sin erase. Thou must save and save by grace. There's a tree, nothing in my hands I bring. Nothing in my hands I bring. 
Simply to thy cross I cling, naked come to thee for dress, helpless look to thee for grace, fall I to the fountain fly, wash me Savior or I die. The last answer while I draw the fleeting breath. While I draw this fleeting breath. When mine eyes shall close in death. When I soar to walls unknown. See thee on thy judgment throne. Rock of ages cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Our prayer is answered in Jesus' mighty name. And so he taught us to pray in that manner. Praise God. Glory be to God. I hope somebody is uh, ready to receive from God this morning. I welcome everyone once again in the presence of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, you are special. In Jesus' name, please uh, help me say to someone next to you, you are very special. Hallelujah. You are somebody. Praise God. And I also want to use this opportunity to say hello and welcome to our online audience. Praise God. Yeah, the camera is over there. In Jesus' mighty name, you're welcome. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. I hope you're having a wonderful experience watching this live stream via our platforms, whether YouTube or Facebook. You are blessed to be here in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. And uh, as usual, uh, particularly our brethren who watch via the internet, I want to... Uh, Ask that you um, share the stream <laughs> and do the work of an evangelist. Let's spread the word. Because I'm about to say something that uh, I consider uh, very special because uh, I heard from the Lord in a midnight encounter. Um, and I'm going to bring you a word to shed light on something very important. Something that I can say forms the basis for your entire existence the reason why you are in this world the reason why you are here the reason why you are alive the reason why you are who you are and the reason why you have come this far how old are you now just look back see how far the lord has brought you look how far the lord has brought us and i believe that today's message is not going to profit us only but also they that are in our connections, they that we know, people in our contacts, WhatsApp, Telegram, whatever platform you use, let's do the work of an evangelist. God bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. And so, brethren, every human being in this world has a calling from God. You have a calling from God. I have a calling from God. Please assist me with the hanky. God bless you. Praise God. You have a calling from God. I have a calling from God. And I want to say that calling varies. Sometimes when you speak of God's calling, what comes to 
mind or what majority think of is ministerial calling. There are so many that the moment you mention the word calling or you say God's calling, the only thing they perceive, the only thing they picture is one standing uh, on the pulpit and preaching, ministering, or doing you know other things uh, such as uh, such as that. But I want you to know that God's calling goes way beyond preaching. And I want you to know that God's calling on any scale, in any form or shape, is a ministry. <laughs> ministry is not only carry Bible and be teaching people. Jesus says, the Bible says, Ah, look what happened in the life of the prophets. Oh, close your eyes. Let me pray for you. Oh, ministry goes beyond that. You know, ironically, there are so many people that carry great callings upon their lives. But they are busy chasing other things. They are busy praying for the mantle of late Kenneth Hagen. They are busy praying to carry the mantle of late Reinhard Bonke. May their souls rest in perfect peace. A lot of them are still praying to carry the anointing of late uh, Maurice Serrello and the wife. It came to me as a very sad news that the wife of Dr. Maurice Serrello has uh, already passed has also passed away may the lord grant them eternal peace in jesus name so while you are praying for the mantle the anointing of these men to come upon you perhaps god has called you to become a, a principality to become uh, uh, a giant an iroko in the technology or technological industry there is not only calling for ministry there is also calling for nursing things such as nursing there is also calling for singing these days every singer is either a prophetess or a pastor or I mean, the two must go together in order for you to look relevant. But that's not true. You can embrace your calling as a songwriter, as a singer, as a singer. You can embrace your calling as a songwriter, as a singer, and still not bear the pastoral uh, uh, title. I mean, it's such a privilege to be in position to lead God's people to the throne of grace through worship. There are quite a few musicians and singers I've hosted in, the, in our conferences, outreach and programs. And they asked to be introduced as pastors, so-so and so. Some of them are bishops. So when they come, Instead of going straight to the point and minister to the people, give them what God has given you. They will, first of all, start preaching. And after preaching, they want to sing. You see, if God called you to be a singer, you can't do the work of a pastor. Speak of a ministry as a pastor or, you know, the fivefold ministries. An evangelist cannot do the work of a pastor. There are those who are called to be evangelists, but today they run churches. In the time of old, prophets don't run churches. Prophets are always on the move. 
But you have prophet, prophet bishop. Well, I am not in position to judge how come the combination and what is the end game, what is the goal, what is the the inspiration behind it, whatever. I'm not there when God called you bishop plus apostle plus evangelist, all com all combined, all combined, and these days they add doctor on top of it, you know. Anyways, um, to be a medical doctor can be a calling. Is a calling to be a medical doctor. Now, a pastor sits there in the chapel or in the church, ministering to people, counseling people, addressing spiritual matters, uh, giving out marriage counseling, and a lot of things. His work is to help people recover spiritually. But a medical doctor, his work is to help people heal physically. A pastor cannot prescribe and should not prescribe medication for you. If your pastor all of a sudden starts uh, prescribing medications for you as members of his church, uh, be careful, please. Seek medical, professional medical advice. You can't be a jack of all trades. You can't be this and that all at the same time. I know there are pastors who are doctors. There are doctors who are pastors, you know, but... I want to strike a balance between everything we do and between everything that we uh, have passion and desire to do. We all have specific things that was given to us by God. You know, the day we came into this world to do a destiny to fulfill, a life to live, a man to become, a woman to become. So, let me tell you, please listen to this. Some have approached me with questions such as, if I don't preach and go about with my Bible, preaching, evangelizing, and winning souls, does it mean I will not have reward in heaven? Hey, Jesus of Nazareth. It's not only those that are called into ministry, like I'm standing here preaching to you, that will have reward in heaven. You see, somebody is watching this, you've been given the ability to write story books for children. Story books for children. Story books for children. Brothers, sisters, this is a great calling educative stories for children see you don't have to mention jesus in that storybook in order for it to become uh relevant in god's agenda in the kingdom agenda what is god's aim see in all of our experiences everything we know Everything that is written in the Bible, every, even the coming of Jesus as a, as, as, a, as a human being and dying, this whole thing is going towards one direction. Absolute peace, oneness, satisfaction. That's why we have paradise, you know? A place of no pain, no worries, and all of those things. We can't be binding devils in paradise when we get there, you know? Won't be doing evangelism in paradise when we get there. All of those things are here because God wants us to experience paradise on earth. The same thing he did when Adam and Eve was in the garden. God made a beautiful place and placed them there. And then they sinned through disobedience and God kicked them out. When God kicked them out, he felt so bad that, hey, man, 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 man. And yet he didn't give up on us. He sent us his son to come die for us to redeem us and it's such a wonderful story huh? a very wonderful story so if you have been given ability to write some very fictional stories story books that brings peace of mind that makes children behave well learn to respect their parents and uh, 
People are, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. If you are a writer, you have a calling. Eh? A very serious one. See, there are people who are gifted in painting. There are those who are gifted in painting. It can be a calling, my brother. Sister, it can be a calling. Embrace it. Ah. Embrace it. Your angel is standing by waiting for you to realize what you've been called to do. Your ability. You know. Your potential. Your talent. Waiting for you to realize it and act on it. And they will help you. But you are busy praying for the grace of Catherine Kuman. Anointing of Catherine Kuman. All right. When you can use your painting to change the world. I once watched a, uh, an auction, uh, a kind of painting auction or sale via the internet and was perplexed, you know. I was shocked to how a single painting could be prized millions of pounds. A single painting. Oh, I want to buy this painting. All right. 500,000 pounds. 1 million pounds. $10,000. I've seen it all. Just painting. Ordinary painting. There are paintings all over the world that we still, uh, many of us wish we see. Like the Mona Lisa painting. and the, Someone painted, painted those things. And God has given you ability to paint. But you are busy. You are busy trying to <laughs> compete. Join the competition of ministry. Because ironically, that's what it seems like it is. You can have 32 churches in one block. What is going on? Hmm? I believe there are other areas that God has called us to function and to minister. Uh, you could be called to operate and function with the Holy Ghost and power in the banking industry. Just look into yourself. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I'm not saying it is wrong to want to do ministry. It's fine. It's fine. Go into all the world and preach. There are many ways to preach. You don't have to be, you don't really have to be a pastor in order to preach. Well, I discovered my calling as a minister when I was nine. I can give you picture proofs. As a matter of fact, I was 11 when I first spoke to up to 3,000 people. 3,000 people in uh, Obibo, Patakot. I was around 11. And I knew this is what God wanted me to do. I wanted to be a doctor. And I realized that this is exactly what God wants me to do. And he, you know, sent signs and wonders after my ministry. I mean, I've seen several uh, proofs that indeed this is what God called me to do. If I had discovered earlier in my life that ministry is not my thing, men and brethren, I would simply find a church and submit and serve as a brother under uh, whosoever is the pastor there and still do my work. By the way, as a minister, it's okay to also have a business or something else you do. You know, a side hustle. You understand? Personally, I don't really believe someone would come to me as a pastor for prayer and they are hungry. I will pray for them and say, go and be, and be, and be filled or go and be full. That kind of a thing. Without putting my hands, without putting hands in my pocket and give that person something so they can eat while they wait for God to answer them and for further provision. Hallelujah. So if you are a pastor and you have something else you're doing, uh, it's a bonus, okay? It's a bonus. That way you can help people outside the church pocket. 
Praise God. So what I'm saying here is that we all have callings. And I can go the whole day elaborating on this. You have your calling. Maybe you are a teller. <laughs> if they give you uh, fabrics, you will do magic with that fabrics. You will sew a kind of dress that uh, every eye or every neck you pass must turn. Every neck you pass must turn. Wow. This is a beautiful outfit. Brilliantly, brilliantly tailored. Um, a brother I love so much commented on my son's birthday cake. He commented on my son's birthday cake. He said, wow, the cake is well iced. I think that's the word he used. Or oh, brilliantly iced. Brilliantly iced. There are people who are gifted when they make cake here. If you look at their work, <laughs> you, will, you will wonder, is this cake from heaven? Or is it uh, imported from uh, somewhere? In the overseas. There are locals who are gifted. In baking. Gifted. In, uh, uh, in cooking. You know. I mean. There are those who are still trying. Carrying CVs up and down. They want to get a, a job in the banking industry. But God has given them the ability to cook. And if only they realize this and open a restaurant. No matter how small the restaurant is. Hey, people will fool everywhere. And they will make money. Hmm? Money answered all things. Hey, But they are busy. Five years now, ten years down the line, they are still praying, God, give me a job. I want this bank to hire me. I want this bank to hire me. After praying and fasting, you go. You apply. At times they call you for interview. You come. At the end of the day, Sorry, story, story, story upon story. Stories upon stories. You, but you're still carrying your CVs up and down. When God has given you a talent. Huh? When, hey Jesus, when you cook. If anybody tests your rice. Eh? If anybody tests, even if it's coffee that you make. Hey, how did you make this meat? How did you bride this meat? Hmm? What spice or spices did you put here? Wow! Who made this food? I saw a video on uh, Facebook some time ago. A guy finished eating in a restaurant. He got up with plate. Went to the front, the counter there. Began to scream on top of his voice. Who made this food? Who made this food? Who made this food? I want to see the person who made this food. And everybody were embarrassed. They were like, has this guy got, uh, has this guy gone bananas? Has he gone crazy? What happened? What is he? Why is he screaming? Hey, there is fire on the mountain. Oh. Some brought out their photos, their, 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 their phones to, to video the fight that will, that will take place in a couple of, uh, uh, in a couple of minutes, in a moment, they were vetoing because these days, when somebody is in danger, somebody needs help. Help don't come quickly because people are, are are busy trying to capture the moment. You know, they're busy. Give a helping hand, lend a helping hand, deliver somebody from trouble, and some are busy taking photos. That's the world we live in. So this brother was in the front screaming, "Who made this food?" The people serving in the front were so as uh, you know surprised and uh, confused, and then the manager came and uh, along with the chef. So the chef was behind the manager. He, 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 in her mind, she messed up. Maybe she didn't cook well, or something was found in the food. Like you buy food sometimes and you see human hair inside it. Or you see a dead fly inside it. Or you see a, a, a piece of metal inside the food. There are things you find in the food and it is, is very important. If it's not food, you didn't cook by yourself. You just be careful 
uh, as you chow the food, you know. But anyways, the chef was worried, was afraid. Only for the guy to see her approaching with the manager and began to clap. <laughs> he began to... <coughs> Excuse me. He began to clap. He began to clap, say, yeah! Yeah! This is the best food I've ever eaten. <laughs> that was a lovely scene. Everybody began to laugh, clap, rejoice, and wow, wow, wow. Wow, say, sister, give me a handshake. You tried, you did well, you are the best. Say, turn to the manager, whatever you do, return this, make sure she's here. I'll be eating here every day. The lady was like, oh, God, I thought I messed up. Oh my God. Oh my God. You see, that's talent. She's talented in, in cooking. There are a lot of things I can go on and on to say. Men and brethren, <laughs> I've said so much already. I've not even gone into the main message. I am speaking on understanding your calling. Understanding your calling. Because there are a lot of people who don't understand their calling. Your angel is disappointed in you because you are busy, busy trying to become like somebody else. You are busy trying to mimic somebody else. Hey, tell your neighbor you are special. In fact, say to yourself, I am special. Brother, you are special. You are special. Say to yourself, I am special. Hallelujah. Your angels are just disappointed. I've seen many angels in the spirit standing uh, akimbo, looking at the people God assigned them to. Doing other things. Doing other things beside what they have been called to do. I want to help you understand your calling. As I will take you through biological proof to show that you are special. Eh? There's a biological proof that you are special. And the first step to knowing your calling. And totally, I will share with you God's word, special word for you today. In the book of Revelations, chapter 22, verse 12. Revelations 22, verse 12. Ah, some of you already know. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be. And my reward is, is with me. Uh, behold, I come quickly. Listen, men and brethren. The one who called you is not gone forever. I've seen many people beside pastors, many people who are doing other things, crying, hey, when will God bless the work of my hand? When will God visit me? Hi. Oh. Oh, the struggle is real. Has God abandoned me? Has God abandoned me? Has God abandoned me? There are many who cry this cry. I mean, I've been a member of several pastors' association, and I can tell you that the struggle is real. Ministerial struggle, hey, is very real. There are pastors whose rent, whose rent is in areas. There are pastors whose children are out of school because they can't pay the school fee. And they know this is what God called them to do. It is, the, it is their calling to be into ministry. And now they're asking questions, Lord, hey, why, why have you forsaken me, oh God? God, you abandoned me, huh? You asked me to do this work. You asked me to go that you'll be with me. Where are my helpers? Where are the partners? Where are the supporters? Lord, what is happening? And you see pastors crying. I don't know what's going on. 
I am sincere. I am honest. I serve God with all of my heart. What is going on? The one who called you, sir. The one who called you. Ma. Prophetess. Prophet. Evangelist. Pastor. Apostle. Bishop. The one who called you is not gone forever. Eh? You know, sometimes people jump into criticizing the glory of others. Neglecting their story. Before you criticize somebody's glory, check out their story first. So there are people who God just remember and raise them, boom, they, they rise and begin to shine. And then mouths will be wagging. Ah, they did this, they did that. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. In person or online, I pray for you in Jesus' mighty name. That God remembers you and raise you in Jesus' mighty name. You see, the one who called us is not gone forever. He said, I will come back. He said, behold, I come quickly. It looks now like you are alone. It looks now like nothing is working. It looks now like things are tight, things are tough. It looks now that, oh my God, what's going on? Hear me very well soon the lord will show up and that will begin to produce results that work will begin to produce fruit in the name of jesus soon he will show up and you begin to reap the fruit of your labor huh very soon very 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 soon you've written books that don't sell very soon the sale will begin you produce the CDs and albums that don't sell. Very soon, the sales will begin. And uh, people will ask and wonder, Where have you been all this while? Where have you been? Where have you hidden yourself all these years? All these years, where have you been? Soon, the Lord will show up. And he shall wipe away your tears. He shall raise you. He shall raise you from the bottom to the top. He shall take you from where you've fallen to where you're going to stand as an miracle, stand as a giant, become influential. In the name of Jesus, he's going to raise you. He's coming quickly. <laughs> um, this can also be attributed to rapture. All right, but rapture is all about rising up. Eh? Rapture is all about rising up. Is that coming quickly? Okay, when Jesus comes, the dead will rise. Whoa, he may come beside the coming that is the rapture. He make as I'm talking to you now, he's on his way to you, he's on his way to your family. He that called you is on his way. Many have said a lot of things, called you lazy, you're wasting your time. You don't know what you want in this life. Huh? Oh, what about those in into graphics and designing? You are very gifted. You're very gifted. Many have questioned your designing or your your your, your artwork. Some say it's AI that designed it, but you did it yourself. The Lord will come quickly, and that labor of your hand shall begin to produce result. It will pay off in Jesus' mighty name. Your labor is not in vain. Whatever you are doing, whatsoever you are doing, like I said, calling is not only when you are preaching. You wear a collar. You, you, you dress and, uh, you know, Expect people to honor you, bow before you, my bishop, uh, his eminence, your lordship. Oh man, calling is way beyond that. <laughs> Somebody's laughing. Say no, man. <laughs> calling is way beyond that. So, whatever you are doing now, do it for God. Whatever you have been given ability to do, 
I'm telling you, do it for God. Do it with all your might. Do it with all your might. God will reward you. There's a song that says when you're doing the work of God, don't look back. They will criticize you. They will say a lot of things. Don't just pay attention to whatever they're saying. Don't. Focus. Huh? They may not acknowledge you. Even in your family, they may not recognize you. In fact, in some cases, members of your family will not even cheer you up. They will not even call you up to say, Man, you are doing great. You are doing great, my brother. You know, in some families, they don't help people. They don't help one another rise. Everybody is trying to rise at the same time. But in a more organized family, oh, this one is doing this. Everybody will join hands to carry the person up, leave the person. But you find out that in most families, it is your own that will try to talk you down. It is your own that will discourage you. It is your own that will sincerely, what I mean sincerely, wholeheartedly desire for you to suffer. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. So when you eventually break away and begin to do your thing with no updating anyone, with nobody in the family knowing what you are up to, you will be labeled, uh, I mean, they say something is wrong with you. Or some, you are under an influence. Uh, your wife has fed you uh, witchcraft. Your, your, your wife has bewitched you. You, 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 you. Your wife has used uh, voodoo on you. Uh, your 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 fiance has uh, fed you some witchcraft to turn your face away from the family. When no member of the family was there, the same person they are criticizing, the same person they're trying to turn your heart against, was the one there for you. Was the one who knows how your 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 tears feels. Who saw your who've seen your tears on many occasions, you know. Whatever you are doing. Because when God comes back, or when God sends an angel to bless you, the angel will not take any excuse from you. Just as Jesus came and the uh, disciples were sleeping, he woke them up. Why are you guys sleeping? Can't you wake up and watch with me for at least an hour? There are angels that comes to check us from time to time. If we are still on track, if we are still consistent, eh? if we are still consistent, there are angels that come to check us. So if you eventually give up because something was said to discourage you, then the angel will come with the blessing for that moment and find you out of place. He will go back to report God. Huh? I don't know what's wrong with this person. No. I don't know what's wrong with this person. You see, whatever you're doing, you're not doing it in vain. You are doing it for God. Stay focused. Do what... Hey, there are some people into famine. Eh? Jehovah Jireh. There is a, a sister that God gave to this ministry by the grace of God. You know, connected to this ministry by divine connection. And from time to time, we greet, we, you know, communicate and... Sister Zanele, I don't know, she's not, uh, she hasn't been with us in person, but she fellowship with us online. She's into agriculture. Agriculture. Hey, Jesus of Nazareth, if you see the farm produce of this lady, <laughs> oh my God, you begin to salivate. You just want to eat immediately. Even if you are on fasting, you want to break the fasting immediately. You know, one day she said, I think it was shortly after her birthday, that while a lot of people dress in corporate attire, running to their offices to sit in front of a laptop or computer to walk, you know, She's busy. She's wearing her boots in the mud, doing something she's passionate about. Hallelujah. You see, even farming can be a calling. Eh? When you plant one seed, eh? 
If you plant one seed, that seed will blossom and uh, yield great fruit. I've had the farmers tell me, I have my, there's a talent in my hands. If I plant here, it must do well. But if somebody else plants, it doesn't work. Have you had something like that? There are those who are blessed. There are those who are blessed. If they plant one spinach, if they plant spinach, hey, it will do well. But somebody who is not called to do that, I mean, they will plant the food, the, 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 the seed will not even grow. They will blame the weather, blame the birds, blame whatever they want to blame. Hallelujah. Whatever you are doing, do it consistently. Do it not minding who is uh, saying what, who is doing what. Do it with all of your might. He said, my reward is with me. Your work is not in vain. Okay? God will reward you. My reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. We shall give account to God one day. The talent I gave you, says the Lord. The talent I gave you, says the Lord. You shall account to me what you did with it. The talent, the grace the wisdom, the ability that I gave you, says the Lord, one day you shall account, for you shall give account to what you did with it. You can't go take the gift of God and bury somewhere, and just sitting there, waiting for manna to fall from heaven, or you're just there criticizing others. Huh? There are those who are gifted, but they don't do anything with their gifts the only thing they do is, yeah, they know they are good. Wow. They are heavily endowed. They are very much gifted. But they don't do anything with the gift. The only thing they do is criticize those who are trying. Ah, you are. <laughs> this one is amateur. Ah, you should have done it like this. You should have done it like this. You are there to, uh, to, to analyze and to say who did it well and who did not do it well. You, when now yourself, what are you doing? What are you doing with the gift that God gave you? You are in your 40s, you're going to 50s. What have you done with the gift? Maybe you're in your 60s. What have you done with the gift God gave you? And when it comes to utilizing the gift of God and functioning in God's calling for your life, age does not matter. Even at 80, even at 80 years, excuse me, sorry, <laughs> Hallelujah. even at 80 years, you can still function in your calling. I mean, how many years ministry did Catherine Kuhlman have? I think three years. Three years, three years, just like the ministry of Christ, you know, has spread like wildfire across the world within a short time. So age does not limit you from becoming whom God called you to be. The day you wake up and begin to function in your calling, that's actually the right time. And God has sent me to wake you up now. To tell you that you are special. And this is a biological proof that you are special. Listen. We are taught in biology that during a combined service between a man and a woman. During a fellowship. <clears throat> you know what I mean. Between a man and a woman. That there is something that is released from the man. There is a, 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 a spermatozoa. Spermatozoa is released and each drop contains millions, millions, millions of sperms. So when it is released into a woman, all the sperm cells will start racing. Where will they be racing to? Where are they racing to? They are racing to the egg. 
to fertilize the egg, the one that is ready at that time, the one that usually bursts and women's, women see their period, all right, if unfertilized. So those sperm cells will be running, they'll be swimming in their millions. They'll be swimming in their millions. And the first, the first to reach the finish line, the first to reach the egg, is the one that will fertilize the egg and the door will close for the rest and the rest will be absorbed by the body of a woman or destroyed but will not fertilize nobody has given birth to one million children at a go <laughs> people give birth to twins uh, triplets uh, uh, quadruplets but you know what I mean so in your own case you won that race out of a million others someone else could have could have been born someone else could have been born someone else could have been born not you but you see you won the race you outran millions you outran a million others and you were born who you started winning from the womb you started winning from the day of the combined service. <laughs> Brother, you are special. Sister, you are special. Hey, you are very, very special. So that's a biological proof that God designed it. You see this race, eh? This is the one that will win the race. It is you that will win the race. No other person. It is you. You win the race. Because I have a special assignment for you in this world. I have a special work for you in this world. Hallelujah. So you are special. And biology, biology proves it. That you are special. Praise God. Oh no, this is a reason why you should just relax and look yourself in the mirror and tell yourself, I'm special. Carry yourself nicely. Get up from the floor. Dust yourself. Bath. Clean up. Wear a nice perfume. Put on a wonderful smile on your face. You are special. <laughs> You're very special. You're very special. And the Lord is coming quickly. To bless you and to make your life extremely awesome praise god and now this is the first step to knowing your calling the first step to knowing your calling is this look into yourself look into yourself i mean forget the media now forget whatever everybody else is doing Forget what anybody else is doing, all right? Look into yourself. Huh? Hey, Jesus. Look into yourself. Whatever you have passion for, hmm? whatever you have the passion to do, where your passion lies, né? whatever you have the passion for, the zeal for, Whatever you are exceptionally good at. Whatever you are exceptionally good at. Are you hearing me? Could be your calling. You get the point now. Do you? Whatsoever you are exceptionally good at. Could be your calling. Oh. <laughs> hey, Jesus. Okay. Hallelujah. I'm telling you the honest truth. Whatever you are exceptionally good at could be your calling. Look into yourself. What are you good at? <laughs> what are you good at? What? Look into yourself. Hey, forget about trying to be like that person on TV. 
forget about trying to be like that brother who has impressed the public, impressed people with his talent and whatever he's doing. Forget about that person. Eh? Forget about what you see on social media. Look into yourself. You know, growing up as a young man, I know I discovered, I, I, I'm a product of prophecy, and I discovered my calling very early in life. But there, there came a time when, as school children, you find out, ah, in my class, a class of about 28, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, a class of about 28 people, huh? everybody wants to be a musician. Apologies for the cough, sorry. You find out that everybody wants to be a musician. And some people are just writing some funny songs and singing during break period. Hey, they'll be singing and everybody. <laughs> there are adults who are like that also. They just want to be like, you see that person, this person is doing that. I mean, that very thing this person is doing hmm, is the same thing I must do. I must do it. Eh? I will add to do them. Hmm? Look into yourself. Look into yourself. That is the first step to discovering your calling. At any age, this can happen. And I tell you, it is the greatest of all miracles to be able to discover your calling and know why you are in this world to realize the purpose of your existence you're not existing for existing sake eat breakfast eat lunch eat supper go to bed wake up poop look for who to mimic and Carry on with life like that. No, you are very special. You are unique. You are unique. I've said a lot of things in the course of this message, but look down into yourself. I mean, look right into yourself. Look right into yourself. And this is very strong in my spirit concerning somebody who has been running up and down with CV. Corukolian Vite, you want to be hired, you need a job, but there is a talent in you. It can be a talent for cooking. Eh? Set up a small eatery. Né? Bring the health uh, department to come and you know look at the place. Just stay out of trouble. Do all the necessary re registrations. Even if it is one cooler bus to start with, to sell by the uh, by that corner there, you know, you will see. Even if it's chips. Hey, there's this woman I, I used to know, Jesus of Nazareth. Huh? See, today is a mystery how she makes her chips. But I, at, at, at some point, uh, I realized somebody close to her that spoke to me that she soaked it overnight and she, there's a way she prepared it so that the following day she will start frying. If you test her chips, hey, hey. If you eat that chips, French fries is also known as French fries. If you test her own, eh, you will want to come back. And while you are eating it, you'll be commenting on it. You'll be telling others, eh, these chips, if you eat it, if you're not careful, you will even forget your name. You will eat all your salary on these chips. I mean, and she was a graduate. They didn't give her the opportunity, offer her uh, the opportunity to, to work. You know, a woman like that in such a populous nation like Nigeria, where you can find a million people vying for one position, one office job, one office position, where you get to work in an office uh, if you have connections, only if you have connections. If you don't have connections, hey, you're on your own, you know. She looked into herself and said, hey, you know what? <laughs> I can do this. So she quickly got uh, herself together by the grace of God. 
was able to lay hand on some money and she began to fry chips. Hey, if you see the crowd that comes to buy her chips every day. And she made a lot of money. She built a house. She became, uh, she became mobile. And everything was just so good. Look into yourself. Look into yourself. And I'm not saying that if you begin now that everything will start working. No, just hold on. Hold on. You say, behold, I come quickly. He that called you is coming very soon. He's coming quickly. And I, I, I said, I'm not speaking particularly about rapture. If you are where God wants you to be and you are consistent, even though the roof over your head is completely damaged in such a way that when it rains, the rain beats you while inside there. Be consistent, please. Be consistent. Carry on with what God says you must do. As I'm talking to you now, I have not arrived though. I am still pressing forward. There are a lot of things that has happened which indicates truly that I am in the I am right at the center of God's will and God's purpose, the center of God's calling uh, upon my life. And you see the devil doing all sorts of things and things that you, you, you really need to be here to understand. Especially our brethren who are watching via the net. If I begin to explain some of these things, uh, you need some visual uh, uh, demonstration or demonstrations to get the the full picture it's not easy sometimes when you are in your calling uh, there will be a little struggles but stay put be consistent behold I come quickly and my reward is with me I'll bless you I will lift you I will raise you God will raise you help us God will raise you help us huh? Your wife will not give birth and you are worried. How am I going to pay the bills? How am I going to pay the bills? Even You will not give birth as a woman and you are worried. Hey, my husband, oh my God. How are we going to raise the money to settle all these bills? Hey, landlord again. No. When your phone will ring, your heart will skip. You become afraid. You become worried. You become disturbed because it's like things are not working. I tell you, things will work for you in Jesus' mighty name. So this is the first step. Look into yourself. Look into yourself. Are you good in computing? I mean, computer programming and this uh, technological, whatever, you are a designer or whatever. Give it your best. Give it the best shot. Whatever you are exceptionally good at can be your calling. And sometimes you don't just start now and become absolutely perfect. All right, you perfect, uh, you you perfect the works of your hand. You, you perfect in whatever you you are doing. You become perfect by the grace of God. So look into yourself. Glory be to God. Our time is far spent, and uh, I just want to share with you a very special message that uh, God has for you today. Uh, it was very early hours of today. I was having a spiritual encounter, uh, a spiritual experience, and it was there a man spoke to me in the spirit. And uh, he asked me what day it is. I said it's Saturday. I said that means I'll be getting ready for the Sabbath service. I said yes. And he, then he said that I must speak today on understanding your calling. That there are a lot of people crying, uh, crying to heaven, as so crying to heaven for help, the way things are. But the problem is not that God is unable to answer them and. Uh, change their lives the problem is that they are not in their calling all right so he spoke to me one word he said whatever you are exceptionally good at whatever you're exceptionally good at can be your calling he also said look into yourself 
look into yourself what are you good at what can you do that there is grace wealth favor attached to that very thing if you can look deep into yourself to find it out you are going to change your life your prayer points will significantly reduce there are many of us there are some of us with bogus prayer points and it's because we are outside the will of god for our lives once you step into it and begin to function in your office as whatever not really a pastor because when you say calling, oh, it's because I want to be a pastor, carry a microphone and be talking. No, 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 no. Brick laying, brick laying, building construction can be a calling. Eh? It can be a calling. Architecture, architecture, architecture can be a calling when you design a house hey they will say where did you get this inspiration from uh, this looks like one of the houses that must be in heaven architecture can be a calling what is your calling uh, what is your calling what is your calling you can sit down here and draw a house that hey jesus Jesus, and you begin to function in that calling, God will change your life, give you money, give you fame, give you blessings while you serve him, you know? It's not really about money, but hey, money answered all things, so hey, hey, oh Jesus, if I'm standing here preaching without food in my stomach, although I don't eat that, I don't eat especially in the morning on saturdays i don't eat but if i finish preaching and i don't eat where will i get the energy to stand before you again to minister if i preach with empty stomach after preaching minister to all of you and at the end of the day there's nothing in my stomach i can fall i can feel dizzy and I fall. They will say spiritual arrow. Lies. No spiritual arrow. The pastor is hungry. There's no spiritual arrow that put him down. Hungry. And that, that, uh, that brings me to say this to you. Please take care of your pastor. <laughs> take care of your man of God. <laughs> take care of your pastor. And God will bless you in Jesus' mighty name. So this is God's special word for you. Look into yourself. Whatever you are good at can be your calling. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. The time is far spent. And we are going to pray right now. If you've been blessed by this message, please do not forget what ministered to you or what ministers to you in this message. Which word, I mean, which word that strikes you the most in this message begin to function in your calling there are some of you <laughs> you are called to stand beside a particular ministry to stand with a particular man of God and support his work and ministry with your resources is a is a calling or oh, hey I speak of mission pillars these are brethren who are not anywhere in the picture physically but they are the reason why everything is happening here they are the reason why my uh, 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 our media is paid they are the reason why we have equipment and we maintain those equipments they are the reason why we even have data they are the reason why we even have food in the house of God bring Bible says, speaking of tight into my house, that there may be meat in my house. You know, these mission pillars are the reason why those who are, I have a ministry to the poor. Seriously. I have a ministry. There are many who are running to the city. 
uh, where there is, I mean, where is happening. But I'm one of those that God has called and sent to the poor. And through this ministry, the Lord transforms their lives and the poor becomes rich. Okay. And now, majority of them would stand by the ministry to say, wherever you go, pastor, wherever you go. Not those who grow familiar with the men of God and that kind of a thing. Anyway, while I'm on the pulpit, I can be a daddy to most of you, your pastor, your spiritual father and everything. But once I come down from the altar, from this altar, <laughs> I know my level, so I know my age. Once I come down from here, I give respect to whom respect is due. All right? There are a lot of people I don't even stand to greet. I simply kneel. Oh, I'm a pastor. You must bow before me. You must respect me. And there's a way, personally, I view these things. Praise God. So there are those who are called to stand by my ministry. There are those who are called to support the ministry on a monthly basis. Not really my ministry. I'm just speaking on a general note. There are those who are called to stand beside their ministry, their pastor, and support them on a monthly basis with their resources. And you will never go poor. You will never go broke. You will never be broke. You will never be broke. Accountability is one of the is is one of our top priorities. Ask for receipt. Ask for details of every dime spent. I will furnish you with all of them. So you see, I have a committee specially assigned to that. You, they will give you a breakdown so that you see your offering does not end in one man's pocket, one man's hand. Whatever you give is strictly utilized for ministry purposes except when i am blessed uh, personally by there, there are quite a handful of people that love me there are those that hate me too for reasons i don't know but there are those that love me and they bless me personally they bless me personally and they also give to encourage the ministry so have you been have you looked into yourself now? Do you know what you can do? Have you whatever that God has put inside of you? Have you seen it? Can you tell that this is something you're very good at and you can become somebody through this particular thing? I want to pray for you now. Pass me not. O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry While on others Thou art calling Do not pass me by While on others thou art calling Savior Savior, 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 hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. May you begin to operate in your calling. May you begin to function in your calling. In the name of Jesus. You are gifted. You are gifted. You are gifted. And the word of God says the gift of a man makes a way for him. May your gift make a way for you. 
may your gift make a way for you in the name of jesus whatever is due unto you whatever you ought to receive in this life because of your calling and your giftings receive them in jesus mighty name receive them in jesus name receive them them in jesus name receive them in jesus name every voice that is speaking against your calling from the lord i silence that voice in the name of jesus i silence that voice in the name of jesus concerning your calling i pray in jesus mighty name that help us from all corners of the world help us help us help us comes to you in jesus mighty name receive help 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 somebody wants to build a daycare but there is no funds to finance it receive help receive help receive help in the name of jesus concerning your calling receive help receive help receive help in the name of jesus receive help in whatever god has given you exceptional ability to do i pray in jesus name that you function optimally function greatly in that very thing in jesus mighty name begin to function in it begin to function in it begin to function in it in jesus mighty name i pray for every pastor every evangelist every apostle every bishop that is watching this that is under the sound of my voice all of you that serve god in different ways and in different categories i pray for you receive the anointing that makes work easy in jesus mighty name the anointing that makes ministry easy receive the anointing that makes preaching easy receive the anointing that makes praying easy receive the anointing that makes it possible to minister effectively to the souls that are hungry and thirsty for god's righteousness and intervention receive that anointing in jesus mighty name as many that are called in different places in the medical industry banking industry media industry those that are called in the uh, health and nutrition in those wherever you function wherever you find yourself and whatever you have decided today that you're going to do for god with your life i pray for you in jesus mighty name that you receive grace to function optimally in that very office in jesus mighty name i bless you i in galahata i bless you 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 in jesus most precious name we pray amen and amen hallelujah it is done it is done in jesus mighty name remember he's coming quickly to reward us and before he rewards us we must first give account to him what we did with the talent with the gift that he gave us in jesus mighty name amen hallelujah um this week uh, that is just ending today today is the seventh day uh, has been a week of rest and uh, i believe uh, you rested and to most of us i mean we do our best to rest but sometimes the demand is too much that we break the rules <laughs> sometimes but we give god the glory for the grace and ability to carry on despite the situation of things around us despite what we feel despite the burden we bear in Jesus' mighty name. Our program will resume uh, as 
usual Monday, I will meet you at the Wailing Wall. Uh, Wailing Wall is our way of beginning the week. We begin the week with a prayer. And then Tuesday, Tuesday, whether we live stream or not, you all know that every Tuesday we wait on God in fasting and prayer. All right? Sister Twaf. Sister Twaf. So this Tuesday I will be uh, ministering to us live. I'll be ministering to us live and uh, hopefully you will join us in person one of these days. And it won't be, I'm talking in reference to our brethren online because the internet space is vast. Anyone who is not taking advantage of the possibilities the internet offers uh, might, might be missing out on a lot of things. So we live stream and encourage our audience to share and support the ministry. And thank you for doing just that. You are blessed in Jesus' mighty name. So on Tuesday, I'll meet you live. We do have family fellowship on Sundays, uh, but uh, hopefully we're going to be streaming that as well. In Jesus' mighty name. Uh, also, our Sabbath Eve <laughs> is all is 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 a. These four days are packed with programs. Sabbath Eve, Friday evening, Sabbath service Monday. I mean so, uh, Saturday, and then Sunday our family fellowship. Monday Wailing Wall and Tuesday. So we have Wednesday. I have Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday until evening to stand in the gap for you in prayer glory be to god thank you for your continuous uh encouragement and support in jesus name if you're watching this and you are led to be a blessing to this ministry please in the comment section particularly on facebook in the comment section there is uh, a link there if you touch the link it will direct you to our to my official ministry website, Chalcedoze Ministries. The website of Chosen Temple International is still under development and will be launching in a couple of weeks. Please, um, we simply can't do without your help. I'm borrowing the words of late evangelist Reinhard Bonke. He said, we simply cannot do without your help. Praise the Lord. Whatever you give, whatever you offer, is uh, great in the eyes of the lord provided that you are given out of a cheerful heart and god bless you in jesus mighty name amen and the brethren uh, right here let us lift our offerings before god as we pray together in jesus mighty name amen let's lift our offerings to god father in jesus mighty name we bless you for this day and we honor you with our offerings with our gifts lord we ask that you receive uh, this offering as a sweet smelling savour father in the name of jesus receive our offerings receive our offerings our offerings I'm going to ask you to place a demand on God as you give. What are you giving in anticipation for? What are you expecting from the Lord? Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Feel free to give. The Lord bless you as you do so. In Jesus' most precious name, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. To our brethren online, um, uh, feel free to use the uh, giving options available to you. They are secured and encrypted, secure and highly encrypted. Uh, don't worry about the safety of your uh, uh, information. Don't worry, this platform is highly encrypted. God bless you. And I also want to encourage you to 
consider becoming a supporter there's that green icon that green icon in the comment section next to the emojis the hat and all of that if you click the green icon you'll be able to become a supporter and partner with our ministry and uh, help us and join us in changing lives in jesus mighty name i will not give people bible to eat tear the pages and give them to eat especially when we have a ministry to the poor and destitute hallelujah hallelujah in the coming weeks by the grace of god although i've resolved not to be putting pictures online uh, that's not the best way to go when you do your arms the bible says do it in secret but there's going to be some coverage to depict a sort of things we do and where the offerings and gifts are going to god bless you in jesus mighty name amen feel free to get in touch with us and uh, let's know how you feel about our work and how you feel about the ministry it is well with you in jesus mighty name do not forget monday we have a program uh, called wailing wall we begin the week uh, with prayers and tuesdays are fasting and prayer as well uh, be a part of what god is doing in jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen hallelujah let's share the grace in fellowship may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forever amen surely his goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen and amen glory be to god hallelujah hallelujah um in the last couple of weeks in the last couple of months in fact um i've received reports and messages from our online audience that uh their experience on the platform was not good there are some that when they leave a comment the comment will be automatically hidden or they will receive a message to say your comment goes against our community standard even though it is just an amen like you type amen so there's a lot of things going on and this i can tell you for sure is part of the spiritual battle that uh, the church of the lord worldwide the true church of god worldwide is facing so please get in touch and tell us your experience and i will see how to reshuffle and uh, resolve some of these problems may the lord be with you may the lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you may the lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace in jesus mighty name do have a lovely sabbath and remember to rest spend time with your family and uh, just take it easy on yourself unplug and uh, get maximum rest the lord bless you this is just i love you so much with the love of god shalom shalom shalom